the recording's running. Okay. It tells me I'm waiting to view your screen. Oh, sorry. There you go. It's okay. <laughs> there we go. Good morning, Lieutenant Colonel Dunson. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing good. So we just we just wanted to touch base again and to go over some of the things that we have changed um, since the last time that we met with you and mm -hmm. to also show you some of the recommendations um, that we just came up with um, completing our class that ended last week. Okay. You can go to the next slide, Elaine. So this slide hasn't changed. Um, this is just showing all of our team members. And it's the same as last time we met. And then the next, this one is um, hasn't changed either. Um, it's just talking about the mission statement. Okay. Um, we I'll added a picture. <laughs> and then I don't think this one has changed um, for the champion or the guiding coalition. Um, I still think they're all the same. I think we did add it. The note part um, for you under the champion has the authority. We did update our problem statement since the last time we have met. Um, we had to tweak it a little bit, and um, we stated that the HC-130J Combat King 2 aircraft, they are experiencing significant downtime, which is due to direct unavailability and excessive wait time for the parts during the unscheduled maintenance. Um, we stated that the current monthly average MC rate for the year was 85.7, and that the Air Combat Command's um, MC rate for the squadron is 82% per month. However, the 71st Squadron failed to meet that goal four months of that year, which was a failure to be mission ready for these months. And that our team will determine the best available options to improve the monthly 71st MC rate and to reduce the number of substandard months in order to promote the compliance with the mandated MC rate throughout the year. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Um, this hasn't changed. That's our current process map that okay. we had made. Um, nothing has changed with that. This is showing our root cause. Um, we had to do a fishbone diagram. And these are the key things that we picked out to be root causes. Um, however, we highlighted the top two, which we figured um, supply and vendors, which um, shows the red is showing the focus on our problems. What we're really wanting to work on is the supply and the vendors. Okay. So cost driver analysis for the root causes, um, space supply squadron part procurement process, and then vendor part procurement process. Okay. We came up with some lean theory of constraint indicators. Um, so we were identifying the most important limiting factors or constraints that would inhibit the project from being able to achieve the goal. Um, some of those were the contracts with civilian vendors, logistic warehouses, um, add to warehouse inventory parts that are used in future maintenance as a buffer when unexpected breakage of these parts occur, the utilization of maintenance personnel time, um, the project implementation, implementation of solutions to the problem, um, getting the buy-in from the maintenance team, and to getting the process in place within the maintenance. So this is just a list of potential improvements that okay. we thought could work. Um, this is our future state map. It's just showing the non-value added versus the value added. and um, it shows a few of the roadblocks with the contract or the contact the vendor and for them to make the order. Um, you know, that can be a lot of downtime there. Mm -hmm. um, it's the extensive map of the processes with potential process improvement. Okay. So 
our recommendations are for the supply squadron, which they have already set up the 24 hour three shift, three shift schedule. Um, that I think that was done within the past two months. Yep. So we um, recommend that the MX unit undergo training to improve coordination of their activities um, with this new opportunity. And we think that will enable the MX unit to process their orders in a near immediate fashion um, instead of having to wait overnight for the order to be processed. Okay. Um, add on call personnel to the warehouse unit. Um, this could allow the parts to be checked out, exchanged, or processed at the warehouse after normal duty hours. And that could help maybe shorten the time it takes for the MX unit to obtain the part. Um, maintainers are not allowed to pick up their own part instead of waiting for parts. So we recommend that the MX unit undergo training to improve coordination of their activity with this new opportunity. Um, provide a civilian lesion for the MX unit dealing with the vendors. So they could perform the ordering, negotiating, funding, and follow up with the vendors. And they can specialize in a particular parts procurement process. And to recommend a long-term project in evaluating and obtaining a SPRAM account which is special purpose, recoverable, authorized maintenance. So when a fair high use card um, to procure part is used from the account, a replacement is ordered. That way it will reduce the weight for an aircraft with the need for these types of parts. Yep. So the implementation plan um, through the MX unit personnel training session, the objective would be to educate the MX unit above the new supply squadron 24 hour um, three shift schedule to improve the coordination of the activities with the supply squadron. Um, the objective would be to educate um, as the proper procedure and coordination of the supply or the warehouse for picking up the parts and to set aside time for training every week. Okay. Implement Implementation through action at the MX unit command level um, to request for an all call personnel to be assigned to the warehouse unit during the off shift hours and to request for the creation of a civilian contract manager position that can serve as a solution for the MX unit's transactions with the civilian vendors. And then to assemble a team to evaluate um, if obtaining a SPRAM account would be beneficial. All right. So this is just our future process map. Um, it ties back into the process map we had earlier. This shows the cost of recommendations. We had to do these um, in two man hours. Mm -hmm. So um, supply squadron slash part pickup self-service, the total recommendation cost um, we said it would be 264 man hours, and that the training cost would be 260 man hours, which would include the two training sessions. That would be two hours long times the 65 personnel. So the trainer cost would be the four man hours. Granted, okay. that's no disruption to the unit or uh, the time for general training conducted on schedule monthly training days. Okay. Um, the on call warehouse personnel. So that would be the cross-training with the cross -training maintenance personnel reporting um, to the warehouse to learn the warehouse part processing. Um, the training costs 40 man hours a week-long process. And um, we say that that could be implemented with parts pickup training and could cause may, uh, minor disruptions in normal operations. The civilian vendor contract manager total recommendation we said would be 40 man hours and that would be one week of training required. The SPRAM account, the cost for account set up and um, to be familiarized with eight man hours. So the total recommendation cost would be 352 man hours and to achieve the full implementation we said would be roughly 60 days. Okay. It talks about our ROI, our return of investment. Um, Matthew stated to keep in mind that military personnel assigned to vendor relations have higher turnovers than potential civilian 
position. Yes, and uh, that was my one of my concerns probably with the vendor contract manager uh -huh. is that the Air Force does a central vendor contract management. So like a lot of the vendor contracts we have are not directly with the base because we have these type of aircrafts all across the Air Force. And so that contract is managed centrally at another base, you know. Okay. So a lot of times like our, I think it would be good to have a liaison between the base and that central contract manager uh -huh. um, as opposed to with the actual vendor. Okay. Because well, because then we're, then we're 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 trying to negotiate contracts between the vendors when we really don't have the authority to do that because it's managed at a central Air Force location. Okay. Well, maybe we can take a look at that and see if we can um, switch that somehow. Maybe yeah, I just. Yep, I think it's maybe just it's just a switch to say instead of us, um, you know, liaison with the vendors themselves, we actually are liaison with the military representation who has that responsibility. So the contracting officer representation, that's probably who we would liaison with. Okay. I'll make note of that so I can um, relay that back to the team. Yeah, and it's probably pretty much the same thing that you guys are looking at. It's just a different, it's just a dif different ent entity as, as opposed to the ven vendor. Okay. Yeah, it's probably the same thing. It's just probably the choice of um, choice of wording that we had. Mm -hmm. um, this is what we believe is best case scenario for the return of investment. So with that future state map that you saw, um, this shows the tally time saved in part procurement and ROI if the part delay occurs for 30 days per month. So you would utilize the 24 hour supply coverage. Mm -hmm. So the awareness of that 24 hour expansion from first shift to three reduces the delay by 48 hours a month. Okay. Um, the part pickup self-service, um, you would have no more waiting and extra day for the parts delivery. So that would reduce delay by 48 hours, two days. Um, the on you, the 24 ahead. hours a day and the parts pickup, is that, um, are you counting through the weekends too? You know, I'm not for sure if that... I would assume we did, but I would have to follow back up with the team because I'm not for sure if we thought about the weekends. Yeah, because that's we buy a lot of downtime on the weekends because they're not open over the weekends. And so we're ready to we, we work until about 11 o'clock at night here on the flight line. And then uh -huh. we have to wait a lot of times until Monday uh, before we can turn it apart, you know, or pick right. up. Yeah. OK. Yeah, I'll check into that um, because we might just want to add in there anyway that it does include weekends. Mm -hmm. Just so that everybody is aware. Yeah, 24 7. The on call warehouse personnel, the personnel takes orders in three shifts, 24 hours from one. Um, the ordering process would be shortened 12 hours, so half a day. Matt said that that does include the weekends. Okay. Parts pick up, so we'll just add that in. Yep. Just one second, I was writing that down, so we'll have it. Yes, it is 24 mm -hmm. hours, correct. The civilian vendor contract manager, which we'll probably need to reword that. Um, streamline the procurement process, reduce delays and orders, so 72 hours, um, which would be three days. Your SPRAM account, this would reduce the weight for special order parts. So the estimated savings would be 360 hours, um, which would be equivalent to 15 days. Okay. So the total time savings in the ROI would be 540 hours, and that would be a 75% reduction in hours, 30 days to eight days. Wow. 
so the total man hours required for implementation is 352 man hours. And then your ROI using one year as a base would equal the 6480 hours saved divided by the 352 man hours, which would give you 18.4. Okay. Now, this, this is if 30 days represents a risk of part delay um, project is mitigation by a risk by 75% with full implementation. Okay. So this just shows you our payback time. And our payback time was the 352 hours, the 15 days after full implementation. And it just shows, um, the green line just shows the cumulative time saved. The red one is showing the implementation cost estimate. So at 12 uh, months, at 12 months it would break where the little yellow triangle is. That's your 12 months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that your ROI would be the 18.4. Okay, let's see. Let me check with Matt because I thought that was the, the last one was the end of the slide. Let's see. Okay. He, oh no. Am I still connected? You are. Okay. Um, because it says my screen was disconnected. Yeah, I still hear you, and I see the slide. Let me just read it real quick. Okay, I understand it. Are you still there? We have fallen off. Yeah. Well, that was the last slide. Let's see if Matthew had any comments. Um, Please, yeah, uh, let's see. Sorry. Oh, oh, there you are. Yeah, we're on the last slide. I understand, uh, good presentation. Thank you. Do you have anything that we can add or anything you think that we're missing that needs to be added? No, I think the only thing is that whole part about the vendor and then adding the clarification about the you know weekend, because I think that's a big piece of it. For us, anyway. Okay. Because we have full weekend duty, and they're changing parts out throw pretty much every weekend. And if we can't turn them in, then that's extra downtime for the aircraft. Okay. I'll make sure I relay that back to the team so that we can get um, this updated. Once we get it updated, mm -hmm. we will pass that along to you. Um, Matthew okay. or Mike will make sure that you get the updated slides. I know that uh -huh. we are in supply chain management right now, and I think we have one more class after that. So um, would you like to meet again? Yeah, sure. Next month? Yeah, we can schedule for a month out or whatever, whenever you guys need to meet. Okay. Well, we thank you for your time and um, letting us present the changes we have made and the recommendations that we think that might help. All right. Thank you very much. You guys have You're a great welcome. day. You too. Bye -bye.